Greetings. I hope all is well today. It is April 28th and it is terrific Tuesday. I hope I'm reaching everybody in a good state of mind. Hope all are well. And I'm happy to be here to bring story with you, share story with you again. So this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. In the stories that I read every day. Welcome. Our story today is Going Someplace Special. The author is Patricia McKizak, and the illustrator is Jerry Pinkney. This is another story by this dynamic pair. Hi, Ann Carol. Going Someplace Special. Going Someplace Special. Oops, I need my glasses. Trisha Ann was about to burst with excitement. Crossing her fingers and closing her eyes, she blurted out her question. Mama Francis, may I go someplace special by myself today? Pretty please? I know where to get off the bus and what streets to take and all. Although it had another name, Trisha Ann always called it someplace special because it was her favorite spot in the world. Please, may I go pretty please with marshmallows on top? I don't know if I'm ready to turn you loose in the world, Mama Francis answered, tying the sash of Trisha Ann's dress. Going off alone is a mighty big step. I'm ready, the girl said, taking a giant leap across the floor. See what a big step I can take? Mama Francis chuckled all the time, studying her granddaughter's face. I trust you'll be particular and remember everything I've told you. I will, I will, Trisha Ann said, real confident like. Suddenly her smile grew into a full grin. S so you're saying I can go? I reckon, but you best hurry on before I change my mind. Pulling her pocketbook up on her shoulder, Trisha Ann blew her grandmother a thank you kiss. Then she rushed out the door and down the sidewalk. And no matter what, Mama Francis called after her, hold your head up and act like you belong to somebody. At the corner, a green and white bus came to a jerky stop and hissed. When the doors folded black, Trisha Ann bounded up the steps and dropped in the fair, same as when Mama Frances was with her. The girl squared her shoulders, walked to the back, and took a seat behind the Jim Crow sign that said, Colored Section. Now, boys and girls, this story took place before the Rosa Parks bus boycott. Trisha Ann had seen such signs all her life. She recalled the first time she and Mama Francis had taken this bus ride and her grandmother had told us, those signs can tell us where to sit, but they can't tell us what to think. I'm going to think about someplace special, Trisha Ann said herself and turned to look out the window. Stop by stop, the bus began to fill. At Farmer's Market, market people crowded on carrying bags of fruits and vegetables. Mrs. Bnell, Mama Francis's friend from sewing club climbed on board. As she inched her way to the back, Trisha Ann noticed there were no seats left behind the Jim Crow sign. So she stood up and gave Mrs. Grinnell hers. It's not fair, she said, glaring at the empty seats up front. No, but that's the way it is, honey, said Mrs. Grinnell. I don't understand why, she began. But by now the bus had reached Trish Ann's stop in front of Capitol Square in the heart of downtown. The door swung open and she hurried off. Carry yourself proud, Miss Grinnell called out the window as the bus pulled away. Ha! 
Holding her hat, Trisha Ann leaned back as far as she could to see Peace Fountain's magnificent water show. It made her dizzy to watch the sprays that shot high in the air, but she liked the feeling and turned round and round with her arms outstretched. Then giggling, she staggered on wobbly legs to a nearby bench. Instantly, Trish Ann le leaped to her feet. On the bench was a sign that said, for whites only. Her face fell, and she wished for Mama Francis' strong hands to hold. Silly signs, she muttered as she strutted away on sober legs. At the edge of the square, she greeted Jimmy Lee, a street vendor. What's got your face all crowded up like a stormy day? He asked, handing Trisha Ann a free pretzel. Jim Crow makes me so mad, she said. My grandfather was a stone mason on Peace, Mount, on Peace Fountain. Why can't I sit down and enjoy it? Jimmy Lee pointed to a sign in Monroe's restaurant window. He said, my brother cooks all the food they serve. But do you think we could sit at one of their tables and have a BLT and a cup of coffee together? Then with a chuckle, he whispered, not that I'd want to eat anything Jesse cooks. That man can't even now scald water. The light changed and Trisha Ann carefully started across the street. Don't let those signs steal your happiness, Jimmy Lee called after her. Trisha Ann pulled her shoulders back and fixed her thoughts on being inside that warm and welcoming place where there were no signs. Hurrying up 10th Avenue, she passed the filling station and stopped to buy a pop to wash down Jimmy Lee's pretzel. At the second light, the Southland Hotel rose up in front of her as spectacular as a palace. Mr. John Willis, the hotel's doorman, saw her. I believe an angel done slipped away from heaven, he said, smiling. Trisha Ann managed to smile back. Mr. John Willis always said the nicest things. No, sir, it's just me. Your mouth is smiling, but your eyes aren't, he said. Just then a long white car with two police escorts pulled up in front of the hotel. A man with shiny black hair and shy eyes stepped out. Suddenly, people were everywhere screaming and begging for his autograph. Trisha Ann got caught in the crowd and swept inside. So often she wondered what it would feel like to walk on the royal red carpet that covered the double wing winding staircase or to stand in the light of the chandelier that looked like a million diamonds strung together. Now there she was, smack in the middle of the Southland Hotel's grand lobby. Somebody pointed at her, what is she doing in here? It seemed as if the whole world had stopped talking, moved, stopped moving, and was staring at her. The manager pushed his way to the front of the crowd. What makes you think you can come inside? No colored people are allowed. And he shooed the girl away with his arms. Trisha Ann backed out, shaking her head. I, I, I didn't mean, she said, trying hard not to cry. Hurrying past Mr. John Willis, Trisha Ann ran straight into the Mission Church ruins where Mama Francis often stopped to rest. There, in the protection of the wall garden, the girl let the tears come. Getting to someplace special isn't worth it, she sobbed. I'm going home. My flowers have been watered already, came a voice above her. It was Blooming Mary, an elderly woman who took care of the garden with neither permission nor pay. Everybody said she was Adelaide but Mama Francis didn't agree. Blooming Mary is a kind and gentle soul, she told Trisha Ann. You lost, child? The woman asked. 
trying to steady her voice, Trisha Ann answered, no, ma'am. I just wish my grandmother was here to get me to someplace special. You can't get there by yourself? It's too hard. I need my grandmother. Blooming Mary nodded and thought on the matter. Then she said, I believe your granny is here, just as my granny is here with me, even as I speak. Listen close. Tell me what you hear. All Trisha Ann heard was the distant buzz of a bumblebee. What was Blooming Mary talking about? But as she listened closer, she began to hear her grandmother's steady voice. You are somebody, a human being, no better, no worse than anybody else in this world. Getting someplace special is not an easy route, but don't study on quitting. Let's keep walking straight ahead and you'll make it. Trisha Ann recalled those words from many conversations they'd had in this quiet place. They were so comforting, she didn't feel alone anymore. She wiped her eyes and straightened her hat. You were right, ma'am, the girl told Blooming Mary. Mama Frances is here, and she wouldn't want me to turn back. So you weren't lost after all, said Blooming Mary, giving Trisha Ann a bright orange zinnia. No, ma'am, I'm not. And saying goodbye, she headed real determined like on her way. Two blocks later, Trisha Ann came to the Grand Music Palace where a group had gathered for the matinee performance. As the group of girl approached, a little boy spoke to her. Howdy, I'm Hickey and I'm six years old today. You coming in? Before Trisha Ann could answer, an older girl grabbed his hand. Hush, boy, she said through clenched teeth. Color people can't come in the front door. They got to go around back and sit up in the buzzard's roost. Don't you know nothing? His sister whispered harshly. Hickey looked at Trisha Ann with wide, wondering eyes. Are you going to sit up there? And the last three rows of the balcony? Why, I wouldn't sit up there even if watermelons bloomed in January. Besides, I'm going to someplace very, very special, she answered. And then Trisha Ann skipped away. I want to go where she's going, she heard Hickey say as his sister pulled him through the door. At the corner, Trisha Ann saw a building rising above all that surrounded it, looking proud in the summer sun. It was much more than bricks and stones. It was an idea. Mama France had called it a doorway to freedom. When she looked at it, she didn't feel angry or hurt or embarrassed. At last, she whispered, I made it to someplace special. Before bounding up the steps and through the front doors, Trisha Ann stopped to look up at the message chiseled in stone, chiseled in stone across the front face, facing. Public library, all are welcome. And I wanna share the author's note. This is my story. Although the setting has been fictionalized, the events are taken from my own childhood growing up in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, like most Southern cities in the 1950s was segregated. The doors of hotels, restaurants, churches, and amusement parks were posted with Jim Crow segregation signs that barred African-Americans who also had to endure further indignities of riding in the backs of buses, attending separate schools, sitting in the last rows of the balcony and drinking from separate water fountains. But in the late 1950s, Nashville's Public Library Board of Directors quietly voted to integrate all their facilities. The downtown branch was one of the few places where there were no Jim Crow signs and blacks treated with some respect. Most African-American parents waited until their children were mature enough to cope with segregation before allowing them to venture outside their communities alone. I was almost 12 when my parents trusted me to make the trek to the library by myself. 
But like Trisha Ann, I have been fortified with enough love, respect, and pride to overcome any situation I encountered. Along the way, I had to face all kinds of racial bigotry and, and discrimination. But for me, and me too, the library was always filled with the specialness that made the effort worthwhile. Since I felt welcome there, I checked out books more often. And the more I read, the better I understood why my grandmother believed the library was someplace more exciting, more interesting, and more informative than hotels, movies, restaurants, and amusement parks. She, like Andrew Carnegie, whose great wealth helped to build the library, knew that reading is the doorway to freedom. From Patricia McKenzie, Public Library, all are welcome. And that, my dear listeners, is the story of going someplace special. And libraries are special places because they're they're repositories of knowledge. And there's so much wealth and knowledge that you can uh, get from the library and from reading. And even during the shutdown, many libraries, you can access collections online. So try that. The other lesson from the book is no matter where your situation may be, people can control, they may be able to control your body, but they can never control your mind. So keep that in mind. So I wanna say hello to my Aunt Carol, to Catherine. Oh, my Aunt Carol called me the singing reading doctor. Well, my family always says you do better off reading than singing. So, but you know, hi, cousin Lisa. Hi, Whitney. Thank you. Hi, Sam. Thank you. And hi, Carlton. I'm glad you all uh, take part or took part of um, sharing story time with me today. I hope you all stay well. Everyone listening, I hope you enjoyed the story. I look forward to sharing stories with you every day. I'm actually running out of books. I have to figure out what to do. Uh, shortly. But in the meantime, be well, be happy, and stay in. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place, five o'clock. Peace.